On tonight's edition of the Overtime, the Flagstaff Eagles girls basketball team is coming off of two big wins. Can the Coconino boys basketball team overcome some season adversity? And the NAU men's basketball team looks to bounce back after their non-conference season. All this and more on the Overtime. Thank you for joining us and welcome to this edition of The Overtime, Northern Arizona's only sports show. I'm your host, Jackie Lamar, and we have a packed show for you tonight with a lot of local sports action. And joining me is sports reporter Jasmine Flores. Hi, Jackie. I'm just ready to get the show going, so let's get to it. Absolutely. Let's jump right into our first topic of the night. The Flagstaff Eagles girls basketball team is coming off of a dynamite start this season, and they're... Uh, at 50, they're <laughs> this year winning 55 to 40 against Bradshaw Mountain and crushing Lee Williams 54 to 24. They're led by a pretty stacked team of seniors this year. Jasmine, do you think that having a roster dominated by the senior class will give the Eagles the experience and edge they need to win this season? And who do you think that those key underclassmen are and what we should be looking to watch? Experience, yes. That edge they are looking for, yes. These ladies are already 2-0. and oh. Coach Tyrone Johnson does have a stack team full of upperclassmen, 10 out of which, 10 out of 16 teammates are seniors, so of course that experience is there. Victory after victory, starting the season off right, there leaves that question, what are the Eagles going to do when the seniors leave? But not to worry, because there are already a few key players who are going to be sticking around for a while. Those key players to watch out for are sophomores Josephine Fall, Haley Armis, Rees Honani, and juniors Monique Ware and Michaela Kanali Lee. Absolutely, Jasmine. They had no freshmen this year and 10 returning seniors, so I believe that that will be a huge factor on the court. Those players have been there before, they know how to lead, and it seems that so far it has been working in their favor after those two huge wins for them against non-conference teams. It'll really build some confidence moving forward, and although it will be a big blow next year to lose this class, I believe that those token young starters have a lot of potential and talent. They could really learn from this season and come out next year even stronger. Now, now let's move over and talk about Coconino boys basketball. The Panthers have had a challenge this year replacing two graduated seniors and recent sidelined injuries of Jared Baca and Tristan Wilson. Now coach Kelly Smith is going to have to start a much younger group on the court to add to this adversity. The men started their schedule a week earlier than all other teams in town. Now Jasmine, do you think that the Panthers still have a chance at success with this young team and their shortened preparation that they have been seated with? You know, Jackie, it's going to be a little different than last season, just knowing the Panthers have to replace two graduated seniors and lost two key players due to injury. But that is nothing to fear because change is always good. I know this team has a great chance of success, even with this less experienced team. They have been doing a great job of showing off their doubters. The Panthers have won their last two consecutive games in a row. They don't really need to rely on any other players to make the game. They just all know how to work together as a team, especially having 6-3, Brett McGowan on that court as a junior point guard and 6'5 Jerome Watson as a power forward. This team is looking for their third consecutive win at their next game against Mojave. Really great points and you know they have won some big games particularly against Bradshaw Mountain sliding by in a nail biter 45 to 44 but the men will need to start winning games by a bigger margin to be a little more competitive in this last half of the season. Now let's not forget that they have a guaranteed shot at a playoff bid in the form of the Grand Canyon Region Tournament in the middle of February so we won't write off the Panthers just yet and it still could be a major comeback season for them. Now over on the court the NEO men's basketball team is coming off of a rough patch as well after losing their last three games to CSU Bakersfield, San Diego and Jacksonville State. The men have been losing these games by a good 10 point margin to these non-conference teams. Now Jasmine, what do you think the men need to improve on in order to get in shape for conference play in a couple of weeks? You know Jackie, I was actually sideline watching the game against San Diego on the edge of my seat because the game was just so intense. Win or lose, these boys are always trying their best bringing what they can to the court. Coach Jack Murphy knew that coming to this game that CSU Bakersfield has always been a tough team defensively. CSU Bakersfield was hot nailing 34 of their 61 attempts. And the Jacks do have some time now until their next game to work on things during practice before. Before, I just think these boys need to really continue to work hard. They have a good team, great coaches, great mindset, so they have what it takes. But I feel they really just need to believe that and bring it onto the court. 
Agreed. The men have had at least three or more non-conference games before conference play starts, and they will have to start hitting more shots and gaining that confidence back from the three throw line if they expect to be successful. Now, Jordan Martin, as we have said, is going to be a crucial leader for this team with his experience along with forward Akko Kaluna. Both have shown to be steadfast leaders on the court and a pair that consistently works well together. Jojo Anderson and Mike Green are both underclassmen offensive guards that have been proving themselves in these non-conference games. Now, Anderson racked up 15 points against Bakersfield while Green hit 12. So, if the Jacks are going to be successful for the rest of the season, they will need to find a way to blend both the upperclassmen experience and the underclassmen talent. Now let's dive on into our last topic for the night, the always impressive NAU Swim and Dive team. This team continues to make waves this season, coming off of a big win at the dual meet at Idaho. And the Jacks won 13 of these 16 events and had a 168 to 127 victory over rival New Mexico State, which is huge. Now Jasmine, this team has always been competitive and stacked from top to bottom with talent. What do you think we can expect from them this year? And do you think another WAC conference victory is in sight? I have mentioned this before. This team is amazing. This week, actually, senior Alexa Geiger swept the diving events versus New Mexico State on Saturday, and as a result, earned her second WAC Diver of the Week award so far this season. Alexa Geiger is just one of the many talented teammates this team is fortunate to have. I am going to believe that this team, I'm always going to believe that this team will always have the chance on winning the WAC Conference. Not so long ago, I personally interviewed Lauren Hazel, who just signed her letter, letter of intent to swim competitively here at NAU. And she has set her goals, and she has set goals for her role within the team next season. So just like Lauren, the rest of this team has so much to offer for many years to come. Both the present and the future look bright for these Lady Jacks. Yeah, this is a team that has shown to be so strong and always comes out to each meet ready to compete and win. They seem to be really in sync this year and they are consistently finding new ways to come out starting strong, which proved to be a big factor in their recent success. They put away New Mexico in the first nine events of the meet and were already up 121 to 48. Although they had some tough losses at the beginning of the season, I think that if they can harness this momentum and confidence at their strong start and find a way to continue that early lead, then we can still expect big things from this team. The Jacks do not have another home meet until January 21st of next year against Northern Colorado, but they will finish their 2016 against Arizona State on December 16th. 